Hey Code Crew, what's up? In this video, I want to share with you the top 11 skills you should have as an iOS developer if you want to maximize your chances to get an iOS developer job. All right, let's jump right in. Hi, my name is Chris Ching and welcome to Code with Chris where we teach people how to build apps. Now before we jump into number 11, I just want to say one thing up front. And that is that if you're just starting out and you're just learning iOS with the intention of getting an iOS developer job in the future, don't treat this list as something that you need to know before you start applying. Yes, knowing everything on my list is going to help increase your chances of getting a job, but you can always apply for junior developer positions and a lot of these things that I named can be learned on the job. Just be honest and upfront about what you know and what you don't know and most employers will be more than happy to grow your skills if they sense that you're an enthusiastic learner and that you have a real passion for this stuff. All right, with that said, let's start with number 11. Networking and working with APIs. These days, it's going to be hard to find an app that doesn't do some sort of networking or download some sort of feed. So that's why it's going to be really hard to get your dream iOS job if you don't even know what JSON is, which is pretty much the standard format when it comes to working with data from APIs or data feeds. That also means that you should be familiar with your Apple networking libraries like URL session and popular third party networking libraries such as Alamo Fire. You should be able to parse your JSON using the codable protocol or JSON serialization. Number 10, Grand Central Dispatch. Now many iOS developers can tell you what the difference is between the main thread versus the background thread without really knowing much about Grand Central Dispatch. but if you understand the inner workings of iOS concurrency, then that is definitely going to give you a leg up when it comes to showing and demonstrating your expertise to the interviewer. Number nine, working with databases. Now there are so many database options out there that it's hard to know them all. However, knowing some of them will be helpful for your resume and your interview. My recommendation, brush up your skills on some of the most popular databases to use with iOS apps. Number eight, working with third party libraries. Now some iOS development teams will swear not to use them because they don't want to rely on a third party library, but I think the majority of teams do use them. The fact is that using a third party library can speed up your development cycle tremendously. I recommend going with time tested, consistently updated ones. And that means that you should know how to integrate third party libraries into your Xcode project using something like CocoaPods or the Swift package manager. Number seven, unit testing. If it's your first iOS development job and you've never worked in a team before, you'll quickly realize how important unit testing is because multiple developers will be submitting code on top of each other and functionality is bound to break. And if you discover it late, it's going to be a nightmare to unravel. That's why creating a test suite to validate the functionality of your app is so important. As a professional developer in any programming language, you should at least know how to write a test case. Number six, source control and team collaboration tools. Team collaboration tools are going to be a must have skill that employers are going to look for on your resume because chances are you're going to be working on an iOS development team. So make sure you know your Git commands and spend some time working with GitHub and Bitbucket so that you can put it on your resume. Some iOS development teams will also make use of Lint tools such as Swift Lint to enforce a consistent coding style. So if you've never used it before, just spend an afternoon with Swift Lint trying it out so that you can put it on your resume. Continuous integration with Jenkins, Bitrise, or CircleCI is something that some development teams will use as well, especially with large enterprise type of applications. Don't worry about it if you've never used them before, that's something that you can definitely learn on the job, but definitely read up on it so that you can speak intelligently about it in your interview if it happens to come up. Number five, Xcode. Love it or hate it, Xcode is still the most popular IDE when it comes to iOS app development. Now, it can be pretty easy to pick up just by spending a few days learning the ins and outs of Xcode with some tutorials. However, Xcode does have some deeper features that takes years to master, such as advanced debugging and using instruments to diagnose your app performance and mastering all of the Xcode shortcuts. All right, number four, Swift. Now, you didn't think there would be a list and Swift wouldn't be on it, right? If you're just starting out and you're debating whether you should learn Objective-C as well, or maybe instead of Swift, let me just tell you that Apple is going forward with Swift and that is what you should learn. There are companies out there that are still looking for Objective-C developers, but that's usually to support some sort of legacy application that was built in Objective-C years ago that has been passed down through lines of developers and you're gonna be end up supporting or 
trying to fix bugs in that app and who wants to do that? So Objective-C can be a nice to have, but definitely focus on Swift programming. Number three, building user interfaces. Now you can't call yourself an app developer if you can't actually build an app, right? And half of the app is the UI. The problem is that there are different ways to go about it. You could use interface builder and storyboards, you could build it programmatically, and now you can use Swift UI as well. Between using storyboards and building your UI programmatically, I would say that it's best to be able to do both. Now, in my experience, building the UI programmatically has been the way to go at the workplace, but some workplaces use storyboards and interface builder as well, and some use a hybrid approach combining both. So it's in your best interest to know how to do it both ways. And in regards to Swift UI, it's still an infant technology and many companies aren't willing to invest in unproven technology. That being said, I do think Swift UI is an investment for your future because as we all know with what happened with Swift and Objective-C, when Apple decides that this is the way that's going forward, everyone's gonna follow suit. So Apple says Swift UI is the new thing. It's in your best interest to learn it, but just know that you might not be able to use this skill right now. Number two, integrating design assets. Now chances are in the professional environment, there will be a dedicated professional graphic designer that is going to design how the app looks and give you the graphic assets to implement into your app. Now a good iOS developer is going to be able to identify which design elements actually needs a graphic asset and which ones can be styled programmatically. And if there's ever a decision on which one to use, if you can do it programmatically, that's going to be preferred because it's going to be faster than loading images into memory. As an iOS developer, you should also be able to style vanilla UI kit elements and create custom controls if you need to. And number one, know your design patterns. And design patterns are simply just software development best practices and they're programming language agnostic, which means that these design patterns can be applied no matter what language you're using. So learn your design patterns using best practices, especially in a team environment is always a good thing. Now I listed these 11 skills in no particular order, but knowing these ones will maximize your chances to get a job as an iOS developer. Now, did I miss any? Do you agree or disagree? Please leave me a comment below and let me know. And lastly, this video is actually part of a larger piece of content on my website titled how to become an iOS developer and land your first job. Now in that article, I have resources and links to learn all of the 11 skills that I presented today. So if you're interested in reading the full article with all of the resources, I'll leave the link in the description below so you can click through to my website and read that. Lastly, I wanna ask you guys to give this video a thumbs up if you liked it, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already because that is a huge help and lets YouTube know that more people should know about Code with Chris. So thank you so much for your support and I'll see you in the next video.